Hello, this is Danny. Um, I just wanted to make a quickish video about how to work out BPM for a track. Um, some some people already know how to do this, but someone asked today, so there's no such thing as a silly question. Here's uh, here's the track from this week. So it's got some irregular parts, um, but in order to f work out the BPM, you get a one bar or two bar loop, let's say one bar. One, two, three, four, one, so. Okay, that's quite a good one. So what we can do, if you've got Samurai, you don't need to worry about it, you just hit stretch. <laughs> and then it works. But, um, except for when it doesn't, what's happening? Okay, it thinks it's two bars, but that's fine. Right, so what I wanna try and do is figure out the BPM, which again, I don't think is really that important. It's more about what your intended BPM is and um, and how you're going to make it fit to that rather than sticking to the original BPM. Okay, so I just tidied up that a little bit. You want to get it kind of as precise as possible. The next step is um, you can auto chop it to four equal parts. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create a sequence which has those four beats. Okay, so now, oh, okay, hold on, I've got. Okay, so you can tell the BPM is way too fast, right? And if you go too slow, you hear gaps. So the idea is to get this so there's no gaps So some, uh, the automatic BPM thing um, was suggesting 57. I can tell that's not right. So let's go up a little bit. Okay. That's it. So that's 66, um, and that means, that means we can just play with it. Um, <laughs> that sounds a bit rubbish. Okay, so the next trick is how to make it fit what you actually want it to be. Um, you don't really need to know that it's 66. You just need to know that you don't want gaps, right? So let's say if you've already chopped up the sample, then you can use uh, the pitch control, which is basically effectively the same as changing the pitch on this control. So let's do that first. I'm gonna say go up to, I don't know, 120. Let's say 110. Obviously now it's triggering too fast, right? So I need to pitch it up to make it play faster so we hear the whole sample. Now here I start to hear gaps. There you go. It's now 110 BPM. I mean, obviously it's pitched, and if you don't want it to pitch, you have to use stretch, but that's how you do that. So if I want to go slower than the original BPM, so let's say 77. No, that's not slower. <laughs> slower is 50. See, now there's gaps, so I need to slow it down.
we go. And that fits. So now we can just make a track of 53 or even a 106, let's say. It should still hopefully fit. And obviously if I want them to play double long, that's fitting fine as well, see? So that's double length. If I want the whole part, then I do it double length. Now, that might not work if, at this point, you can actually resample the sequence and it will get rid of the pitch and then you'll be at 106. So let's, let's just do that quickly. So if I go to the sequence, oh no, it's in here. So resample loop. Nope, that's not, oh is it? Yeah, that's what I wanted. So now it all, it got rid of the pitch, okay? And now that new sample, oops, where was it? Here. If I play that at 106, It sounds exactly the same as it did before, except now pitch is not there anymore, so you can make drums to it and they're not pitched. The other option is to use actual pitch on the sample, so let's go back to 66, because that's what we figured out was the BPM. Now, if I put this original unchopped this is the bar that i chopped previously but it should just play fine okay so that's looping good so again same same trick really if you want to go up see it's not looping right so in this case you want to go to edit and what we want it to do is actually be fast enough that the line gets to the end. Or if you want it to be not quite as fast as that, you can make it play half the sample at this speed. And that's, that's all right. So now we're at one, two, six. And the sample now should, technically, <laughs> as long as, as, long as Al, Al Jarreau's drummer um, played well enough throughout the whole song, we should be able to just pick any old part. Let's make a bar here. In fact, you don't even need to make a loop anymore because at this point, if you just sequence that, it should just repeat with without skipping, hopefully. Let's see. It's not bad. <laughs> Maybe not absolutely perfect. That could be the drummer's fault. Um, or the pitch might be very slightly off. But again, you can change that slightly. The only reason to use the actual pitch uh, trick is if you've already done all your chops, because if you've got um, loads of chops from here, um, and then you've already made a beat with it, and it doesn't quite fit, then it's a pain to go to each one of these and get the pitch exactly the same. Now, the, there was a trick, so I, now I've changed that. I, I can't seem to make this work anymore, where you go to another one and it copies it. So, oh, there, it just did it. I don't know, I wouldn't rely on that. So, if you've got a lot of chops, use the pitch method, because if you've already made yourself sequences, use the pitch. Otherwise, um, pitch the original sample 
and start again. So now this sample works at one, two, six, I know, and if that's the pitch, um, speed of my song, I can just chop it up and it will all fit ish, hopefully. Um, hope that was useful. Um, I'll post it and let me know if you have any questions. Cheers.